Okay, well, first of all, uh, thank you for the opportunity and the invitation to present the Art Player platform, which FACT has been working on for uh, uh, only six months. It's a, it's a, it's a one-year, it's actually not even a one-year funded project. We've got till December to sort of get this to a point wherever, where, where we think it's ready to roll out across the sector. Um, I'm just going to give a brief kind of introduction about myself. Um, it's, as I say, it's, it's, my name's Roger McKinley, and I am, oops, I'm going too fast through that. I work for FACT. I've been at FACT for 10 years. FACT is, stands for the Foundation for Art and Creative Technology. It's been running as an organization for over 20 years in the sector, uh, doing groundbreaking exhibitions in education, uh, with its ultimate aim to, to, to pioneer new forms of artistic collaboration and expression with uh, a long history of working with commissions and presenting new work and creating content for the public, with the public, and uh, for sort of distribution in partnership with other organizations. And as it says there, and I'm going to attempt to pronounce some of these names. Uh, so we've, we've worked with artists as, as, as diverse and as important as Pippolata Rist, uh, Bill Viola, Pichapong Veritsafakul, uh, Vito Aconci, and Isaac Julian. Um, the part of fact that I work in is actually, or have been working in for the last 10 years, is the, is the mites, which some of you will know, and some of you have probably worked with before. MITES is the Moving in the Image Technology and Exhibition Services. So its aim is to provide a service for the sector which will help support the production, uh, display, and presentation of new work uh, by artists. In some ways, the, art, uh, the reason I mention that is because the Art Player TV platform is in some ways an extension of that activity, and I'll get onto that later. So Art Player TV. Um, this is our logo. Um, art play, this, is, this is a very key and important uh, point because I'm not going to really mention fact again particularly unless anybody has a specific question about it. But the art, play, art Player TV product or platform isn't a fact product. So fact is not involved in some ways in branding Art Player TV. It's a, it's a self-contained, self-managed project that sits under the umbrella of fact. In, in a similar way that MITES, the Moving Image Technology and Exhibition Services, did when it started back in 1992. Um, so what is it? Well, the Art Player uh, platform is, as it says here, a free-to-use national media player for the arts. So what we're designing is a place where arts organizations in the funded sector can put content that they create as part of their program to enable it to, to, to redeploy it in a place where, they'll be able, where, where the public can access it. Um, it's designed for the National Portfolio Organizations, or RFOs, the Regional uh, Regularly Funded Organizations as they stand now. And it's, as I say, together moving image content for all to see. I think it's quite interesting, and it's a good indication of the uh, sort of shift in how the Arts Council are considering uh, the relationship between the organizations that funds and the sector in general. And I think net the Nesta Fund is part of that kind of consideration as well. When you look at the, the difference in terminology between the regularly funded organizations and national portfolio organizations, so what that, I think to me, what that kind of indicates is that they are kind of consolidating the, pub, the way that the arts organizations within that they fund face the public. So the Arts Council are supporting a national portfolio and what the Art Player platform is trying to do is try to find a way to present that national portfolio in a coherent and concise way. Um, what, what will it look like? Okay, so it basically at the minute it's going to be, it's essentially a, a website. So it's a website where people can create their own channels using the content they've already created put it up online, and um, people can go to it, see it, find it. Um, it's for all organizations. It's a place where you can put your archive as well. And it's a place where hopefully, some, some way down the line, we'll be able to redeploy that um, content for other purposes. 
Um, I'm not actually going to go to the website because I know the um, technical problems that can rise up from kind of jumping out of one platform and into another in terms of how you present things. So it's, but it's effectively, it's going to look like a website. I was reading, um, I was reading my um, middle son, um, some, some stuff from one of the um, Horrible History series. And by the way, I think Horrible History is a fantastic series. Um, bear with me. Uh, it was about um, the hunter-gatherers 300,000 years ago. And w one of the key things that hunter-gatherers did uh, was to work in packs or in groups. So if you wanted to kind of bag a mammoth, if you wanted to bag a, a fund, uh, in some ways, these days, as ever, 300,000 years ago, you have to work in, as groups. So with the Art Player platform, what we set, set out very early on was some key organizations that were local to us um, um, that we could work with in terms of the, um, getting a good spread of the activities that they do and, and the way that reflects, in some ways, the activities across the whole, the whole region. So we have, uh, we have these are the, the list of current organizations that we work with. Um, Anthony mentioned the, um, uh, the Corner House were due to kind of co-present this as well, and that's one of our key partners. Um, what they were going to present on was a different thing to Art Player TV. They've got uh, some funding and some hardware to actually record and um, present in events, live events, uh, stream them live. What they, call, uh, they formed a group called the Broadcast Group, and they were going to be the other part of this presentation. I've not been able to make it, but um, uh, nevertheless, I wanted to show you that we are in partnership there with the Corner House. Each one of these organizations obviously have different sort of skills bases and a different sort of set of practices. So uh, the Unity, you know, they work very much, they're obviously a theater group. They work very much with the community. They're both local and national. Grisdale, obviously, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's driving force is kind of residency programs and working with the, uh, the people uh, in the community up there. Site Gallery, very much like FACT, they work with emerging media practices. Uh, Dada, um, again, they have different um, sort of audience needs to a lot of the other uh, group. And the Corner House is a cinema and contemporary art organization. Fact, in some ways, sort of with the exception of Unity Theatre's activities and Dada, in some ways sort of encompass um, some, of all, some or all of those practices as well. So it's a platform. And what do we want that platform to do, we want it to be able to provide that, to reuse the content that people are making anyway. But of course, not everybody's making content. So um, what we needed to build in other activities within the, um, within the offer of the Art Player TV platform. And we basically isolated these three needs uh, from the research that we did early on in the project um, that will enable, enable us, which is obviously very critical, to create and content to capture, edit, and publish the, the, the work that's being done. So as part and when partnership with the organization I've just, organizations I've just shown you, we had training in recording techniques, we had training in, in editing techniques, and training in managing content. So those three things, although some organizations will be au fait with it, most we found that weren't that au fait with it. So this is, as I was saying before, this is going back to Art Player TV being an extension of the Mike services in that it's able to provide a service to the sector which will enable them to create and raise the standard on the content that they're actually creating. So what we've been doing, in effect what that means, what we've been doing is we have a small production team that go out to the organizations when they have an event. We find an event that they want to work with. We have a schedule. Once that event is established, the, our production team will go out, record the event, and then the organizations involved will um, put forward volunteers or staff or someone they want to work with or as an organization perhaps even from outside of that uh, arts um, organization that they want to build a relationship with. Um, they will then ghost on the production that we will lead on for the event and we'll use the opportunity to edit, uh, once we've captured it, to edit it and uh, publish it, again, with the uh, affiliated um, either volunteers or staff or external organization uh, the, the ghosting on that. Then we'll, we'll return to the venue for another event where we'll effectively do it in reverse. So then the organization's volunteers will have the, um, 
be recording the content, be editing the content, and be publishing the content on the, on, on the site, on, the, on their channel on the site. So it's sort of one way and then, and, and then the other to enable the, um, to give enough time for those organizations and the volunteers or the people that are put forward to actually pick up on the training. So, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm sort of explaining what, what we've been doing, but what I wanted to do what I wanted to do actually was show you a short clip as well of sort of one of the active uh, or a part of this. It's actually fairly long. I'm not going to show it all. I'm going to sort of break it off halfway through. But it, it's, it's to give an example of the kind of content we've been creating in partnership. This one is with the Site Gallery for a recent exhibition they were do, uh, they've been doing. And, oops. I'll just get, play that. So I'm going to play this now. So I'm going to break it off halfway through. Oops. That's PCs. Uh, there you go. I'm not going to touch it. I consider myself more a spectator than an artist. More like one guy who sits on a sofa and see what happens. <laughs> Ava and Franco Mates are media hacktivists. They're pranksters, they're tricksters, and they're artists who are difficult to sum up in a nutshell. My name is Franco. She's Eva. We work a lot with the internet, computers, and the media in general. Like, we are not very creative people, not especially. I mean, I think that creativity, like genius and inspiration, all of that part is totally overvaluated. When you enter this exhibition, the first week you see is a um, taxidermized cat in a cage with a little bird on top looking at him, like making fun of him a little bit. And it was made when um, we had an argument with a friend about creativity and art in general. Like we were saying, like that the internet creates like more art in a day than an artist can create in in his life. We said, okay, um, we're gonna open a website. The first image that comes out, we'll try to make an artwork out of it. The first image that came out was a collage of a lol cat, of a cat that um, in a cage. They submitted it into an exhibition in America and they attributed it to Maurizio Catalan. Maurizio Catalan is a really famous international art world star um, and everybody went wild for the work and it was only when he stepped into the fray and said, mm, actually guys, I wish I had made that work but it's not mine, that everybody realised that they'd been had and that this whole process was actually part of something much bigger. It's just the name of an artist like attracts so much attention and um, sometimes like the context can like, let you think that something is like more valuable or more artistic. The next work is a work called My Generation. It's a documentary film in a way, but made up of um, found footage from the internet of kids getting enraged with their machines. They've gathered those things together and sort of pointed out this cultural phenomena, not just that we get angry with our machines, but that there's this whole subculture of um, documentation. I, I mean, I would urge you to go and see the exhibition as well. It's very good. Um, so that, I just wanted to show you or give you an indication there of the kind of uh, watermark of kind of quality that we're looking at being able to kind of create within the sector. So hopefully you can see from that that there's some possibilities around that level of quality being um, redeployed elsewhere. If we can create a culture within the art sector where we can create good quality content, such as hopefully that's an example of, then it gives us opportunities to use that content elsewhere. So, I mean, basically when we started off the project, we, we, we needed to find what the need was. We needed to do some research around it. I mean, there's, there, there's been some great research that Nesta have done in relation to kind of business modeling. And I read Hassan's um, report um, on the NT Live project, which I urge everybody to read before applying, because actually it's a very, in terms of creating a business model, it's a really um, useful, incredibly useful document. Um, the research we did was, was taken out by a company called, uh, was done by a company called PH Research. Um, and it, it's sort of quite illuminating and kind of what we thought would be the case anyway, but at least we had the statistics to kind of back it up. And that actually quite a lot of organizations are producing content because moving image content is seen as a very legitimate and very useful way of people um, getting to know what you do. So, um, and a lot, most organizations these days have their own websites. 
or use um, other dissemination means for that content. Um, so I should just say actually that we, we, the, the, the 100, of the 145 um, RFOs that we did, so I think that's about a sixth of the total organizations at the time. So hopefully it's a reasonable slice of the kind of number of organizations that are in the sector. And of those, as I say, 70% produce their own content and 86% of that 70% publish it online. Um, but only 36% of them actually publish it on their own websites. So there seems to be um, a need uh, for a space where, where content is being, there seems to be a gap, basically, between the content that's being cre created and where it's being put or where to put it. Um, we then, as part of the survey, put the proposal of what we intended to do in terms of creating this site, this, this was one-stop shop for, for moving the image, um, to the organizations. And as it says there, 75% of them felt that that would be a benefit to, to their organization. Sorry, 93% said the organization, the organization would be interested in using it, which is obviously a very high return. Um, and immediately we saw that within the sector, they, 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 they there was a great understanding of the value of having a place where they could put video content. Um, the key factors for those, those organizations, the ones that they pulled out most um, in terms of what the platform would be used for was, and I thought this was really interesting, promoting the UK arts industry in general. So there was awareness not just but from your specific organization's point of view, but from a general point of view of raising the profile of the whole sector. Also very key was you know, the ability of that platform to then push the audience to their own website, to their own activities. Because what the website or what the space or what the platform can't do is actually recreate everything that you do. It's, it's actually specifically about aggregating moving image content. Um, but with the idea of then once you're there, like you would do if you're on Vimeo, like you would, you would do if you're on YouTube, push you to their, your own website to whatever you want to do and sell tickets and so, so on and so forth. So the, the traffic to the website for organizations is very important. And obviously, the relevance of the websites, uh, of the website's audience. Um, so one would hope or one would suspect that the audience coming to that web, to, to the website platform, Art Player TV, would be looking to do, to find moving image content which will help which will help them create a deeper understanding of what's going on across the whole sector, rather than specifically with an organization. So the organizations that we approached, so the PH Research approached, 84% um, of them used YouTube, 41% used Vimeo, and as I said, 36% had their own, uh, web, uh, had their own web spaces to, to publish co moving image content onto. 15% used Facebook, but that's on an upward curve and quite a steep one. So there's a lot of activity on social media sites uh, where, which arts organizations are engaging with, which will, um, which will grow, which is growing, um, and which um, is, will form a part, social media will form, uh, is, has formed part of the Art Player TV platform. So who wants it and who needs it? So the, the, the arts organizations want it um, and need it, I think, because of, as I said before, the, the lack of use of moving image content on people's own web spaces. So it's a way to focus that for the public. And artists need it because what you're going to get, hopefully, is an aggregator of the activities across the whole sector over time, also with an opportunity to put one's own archive on there. So you build up a critical mass of content which effectively represents what the sector does to the sector and beyond the sector. Um, so basically to reach them, um, as I say, we're sort of halfway, we're halfway through the project now and what we need to move into in the next phase in the August, September, October period is essentially going out to those organizations, other organizations beyond the core and finding um, key organizations to work with. So if anybody here wants to work with us in terms of you know, creating a channel which will help to um, create a critical mass around the content, um, then please you know, come and see me.
advertising campaigns, so say social, social media services, Facebook, Twitter, blogs, those are all areas that we're going to kind of move into in terms of, in terms of reaching people to actually um, engage with the um, platform. And then with, around the marketing strategy, we'll have ways of, uh, obvious ways uh, of finding metrics around how well it's uh, received, how well it's being used, um, how many times uh, people are viewing it, sharing it, and where people are going to, how long they're staying on the site. So those will basically form part of the reporting back to the Arts Council about what, what the platform do does and where to take it next. Um, we've got a kind of th three stage, three phase strategy. So the first phase was the organizations I showed you at the beginning. They are kind of first core partners that we're working with in terms of generating content. We're moving in now to the second phase, and we've not actually directly approached any of these organizations yet. So if anyone's watching this online, or if anybody's here uh, from these organizations, we will be getting in touch soon. Uh, but we wanted to sort of take it out beyond, uh, look at the content that's actually already there, and start to utilize some of the content that's already been created from the other organizations. And then this is, this is not personal or um, particularly um, scientific how we sort of got to this list of organizations. It was just from the research that we did because these organizations said that they were producing four to six content pieces per month, but not all of them actually had somewhere to put that content. So in some ways it's strategic from our, from our player's point of view. We're looking at organizations which are producing a lot of content but not necessarily redeploying or, re, or using it anywhere. And these are the organizations that we th we're looking at. It also covers some of the gaps that um, we had in terms of what the sector does. So um, we'd not really specifically in the first phase work with an organization who's dealing specifically with music or poetry. Um, and it gives us an opportunity to kind of grow, grow, grow the mass of content on the, on the site related specifically to the sector. So when's it going to happen? Okay, the, 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 the timeline for this basically is the project has started. We started back in March. Um, at the minute, we're, we're kind of building the platform, so it's, there are no conclusions from this yet because actually we're only halfway through, but nevertheless, um, the platform is um, growth, uh, the build is happening um, as we speak, and we're in the kind of interim period where we've got to report back to the Arts Council on how that's happening um, and where that's going. And as I said earlier, the August, September, and October periods are the periods essentially when we're going to be going out and um, sharing the uh, platform with other organizations to create a critical mass of content. Um, what are we doing for time? Am I out of time? Uh, okay, quickly then, partnerships we're going to have. Hopefully, we want to sort of line up with the BBC and other cultural industries. If we're creating content, we want to be creating content which is possibly linked up with um, production companies locally to organizations. Uh, we want to do training, um, as I mentioned already, and we're creating a sector services, so sector-wide services, what fact are good at, what mites have traditionally always done. Um, it's an expansion of that. Thank you.